Porsche's video is sponsored by Kinza. So if you Google, which is better, OLED or QLED, you get 94 million results. And learning the difference between the two most popular TV technologies going right now should not have to be that complicated. But there are a lot of key differences between QLED or QLE, depending on how you want to pronounce it, TVs and OLED TVs. And as you look to buy a new set sooner or later, it's hard to look at the technologies and kind of figure out which one is best for you. And throughout this video, I'm gonna to try to explain the pros and cons of each and help you pick the right set. So I wanna start with kind of the basic differences between QLED and OLED TVs and kind of give those who don't know kind of a base knowledge of what these two technologies are. Uh, also, I'll make sure to put chapters so you can jump to the section you want to or kind of make it easier to revisit the video later when you're actually doing some TV shopping. But while you're down there, Hit the subscribe and like buttons are super close uh, if you want to, super helpful. So starting with the one you're most likely familiar with, OLED. Uh, it stands for organic light emitting diode. And basically what that means is each and every pixel in an OLED TV acts as its own light source. Think of it as millions of tiny little RGB, that's red, uh, green, and blue light bulbs that can turn off and on independently. And QLED, on the other hand, is just a very high quality, fancy LCD panel. QLED means quantum light emitting diode. That means there's just kind of a crystal layer over the panel that reflect either red, green, or blue, the RGB. But that translates to is QLED helps to enhance colors and brightness more than like a regular LCD panel would normally produce. QLED tech also has the benefits of tons of brand options. Samsung, LG, TCL, Hisense, just about everyone uh, has a QLED option in their line. Just be aware that companies love to overcomplicate their naming schemes. So like for example, Samsung QLED is called Neo QLED, LG's is QNED, Hisense is called ULED. Thankfully TCL calls their QLED. So while QLED TVs are available from pretty much everywhere, you might not know that that particular set is using QLED unless you know their particular acronyms. When it comes to OLED, not every brand will have OLED TVs in their line, but there's still a lot that do. So Sony, Samsung, LG, uh, and more. And there also are evolutions of OLED as well. Uh, things like W OLED and QD OLED, uh, which offer better brightness and color brightness to existing OLED technology. So there are kind of levels and steps within OLED TV technology to consider each with their own upsides and downsides. So just to kind of summarize that a little bit, you can kind of think of OLED as emissive, where the diodes emit their own light, and QLED is transmissive and relies on a backlight to pass light through the filters laid over each LED panel. So now you guys have a bit of understanding between the two technologies, I do want to dive a little deeper uh, into each one. All right, so QLED does have advantages, and there are clear ones, but there are some areas where it just cannot compete with what OLED can do. OLEDs, first of all, you've probably seen their designs if you walk around to Best Buy. OLEDs are always the ones that look incredibly thin. Kind of not having to have a whole LED backlit panel makes them thinner and generally kind of better looking and flush on a wall. Uh, some OLEDs even gone as far as putting sort of their own hardware in a separate box. So all you're left with is sort of just thinner frames to sort of hang up. And since it has individual diodes that can light up on their own, that also means each diode can run independently and turn itself off. That's why OLEDs usually come at premium prices and they are known, the flagship feature of OLED technology is they get crazy black. So pixels are literally just turned off and sort of near infinite contrast. So again, when you're seeing black presented on an OLED TV, it's not that it's showing an extremely dark version of gray, it's kind of tricking your brain to thinking that it's black. It is completely true black. And because of those diodes, you can also have nearly unlimited viewing angles too. No matter what angle you view the TV, there's no shift or color or dimming when you look at the set, even at extreme angles. So usually with TVs, you're sitting right in front of it on a couch, it's gonna look great, but if you zhuzh off to the side or you're the one who gets their last to watch a movie and you're kind of staring at a weird angle uh, on OLEDs, that TV is still gonna look beautiful. And traditionally, and this is not universal, OLEDs tend to be better tuned out of the box. So there's less tweaking you need to do to get that kind of ideal look. So if you're wanting kind of that premium picture and don't really want to do anything in the settings, don't know about calibrating, don't care, OLED is a pretty easy choice. 
Uh, if you're a gamer or you like sports like me, uh, OLED TVs also offer incredibly high response time. So you've got the option to almost completely remove motion blur if you want. So you kind of get that nice fluid motion when you're playing a game or sort of watching a game. However, it is not all rainbows and sunshine for our friend OLED. Brightness used to be the biggest Achilles heel of all OLED TVs. And in the last few years, this has become less and less of an issue. Because each diode is emitting its own light kind of naturally, there's a limit to how much light each one can put out. But advancements to basic OLED tech have come along. This is where you hear things like W OLED and QD OLED, uh, which offer really bright images while still giving you those perfect black levels. And there are still OLED panels being sold that don't get as bright. So if you have the TV in a room with a ton of natural light, the image might look dim. It is not as common anymore, but something to at least be aware of. And if you buy a set that is W OLED or QD OLED, you don't have to worry at all. The biggest disadvantage of OLED uh, is burn in and image retention. And kind of similar issues from old tube and plasma TVs. If you're watching sports, news, or playing games, they have graphics that are stationary on that screen for a long period of time, there's a very slight chance that the graphics may remain kind of visible for days, weeks, or even permanently. Now, big caveat here, this is really only an issue with older OLED, say OLED TVs that are like four-ish years old. It is not really an issue at all with modern OLED TVs. How OLED TVs have actually removed that burn, if you're interested, uh, was the feature called ABL, or sort of auto brightness limiter. Effectively, it's a safety feature. It's gonna dim the overall brightness of the image during times of low activity or during really bright scenes. The diodes won't overheat and therefore kind of preventing the burn in. What that does mean for you is sometimes the brightness will appear to kind of randomly dim. It won't likely happen a lot while you're watching something, but it's kind of something to be aware of. The OLED TV I have in my house is now three years old um, and is W OLED, and I've never had any issues with burn in at all. So it looks as good to me now as it did three years ago. And if OLED TV is so amazing, why is there other TV tech that exists? And that's traditionally because OLED TVs are more expensive, they come at a higher price. But like everything, times have changed, and inside of that sphere of OLED, from regular OLED to QD OLED, there is a lot of variance in price and deals to be had. So depending on when you're looking to buy a TV, you might find a really comparable OLED price to a QLED price. All right, so I wanna take a break from talking about like the TV technology. Uh, to talk about technologies, for me, that hasn't worked in the past. You guys might not remember this or might not know, but I ran a website for the better part of 10 years called Techno Buffalo. For about seven and a half of those years, running the site was the biggest pain. And it wasn't because I was trying to struggle to get content up. It was because the site was going down. Most of that was because I wasn't using a good host. It's actually this video sponsor, Kinsta, would have solved my problems. I know a lot of people are already running a website. Kinsta will actually migrate your entire website for free. You've got a 30 day money back guarantee to try it. So like I can imagine if Techno Buffalo could have run you know, up to 200% faster with Kinsta. I probably could have used their custom control panels too. It's really easy and simple to use. You're also gonna get like real WordPress pros, not like AI chatbots, like experts who respond in minutes and even tackle the trickiest problems. A lot of the issues that I have is I file a ticket and I wouldn't hear back for days and weeks and the site kept getting bogged down and would go down. Kinsta honestly just takes all the hassle out of creating a website. It's created by people who know how websites are supposed to work and they do a really good job doing it. If you are like me and you're tired of being your own website support team, sort of switch your hosting to Kinsta. Actually get your first month free. And sort of don't worry about the move. They'll handle the entire transition for you. Uh, no like tech expertise required. So just check out kinsta.com slash retinger. That's K-I-N-S-T-A dot com slash retinger. But the link will be down below. But there still are a ton of compelling reasons why a QLED set might be perfect for you. They can produce an extremely bright image and that brightness can be accurate right up to peak brightness. And this allows for impressive HDR images. And on top of that, because of its brightness, you never have to worry 
about what kind of room you place a TV set in. You could have a room with all the windows and all the sunlight, and you would have no problem seeing a bright and colorful image. And part of that is thanks to the LED backlit panel, but the other part is due to the quantum dot layer. It enhances both the image's brightness and color vibrancy, which gives QLED TVs the sort of signature richness to the image quality. Uh, there's also a much wider range of prices within the QLED space. Uh, premium QLED TVs can creep really close to those OLED prices, but you just easily find them in the budget category as well, often at 500 bucks or less, depending on the time of the year or sales going on. Typically what you're sacrificing with those lower price options are things like higher refresh rates and resolutions that tend to matter more to the gaming crowd or people who want a high level of cinema experiences at home. So if you're just looking for just a good TV that looks great, you can find some really good options at just amazing prices. Another really big perk of QLED TVs is that you can actually future-proof yourself for way cheaper. While most TV content is still being broadcast or shown either 1080 or 4K, uh, 8K content presumably will eventually come. And you can purchase an 8K QLED TV for a way more reasonably priced than an 8K OLED TV. Now obviously there's not a ton of 8K content available, but for the kind of person who only wants to upgrade your TV set every or five or 10 years, uh, an 8K QLED TV could at least be worth looking into. But there are some disadvantages too, and because it's backlit, it's not as thin as an OLED. Now there are still models that allow you to mount it flush on a wall, but typically you won't get that razor thin display like an OLED. And because of its backlit panel, the black levels won't be as black as an OLED. You always get some variation of gray to represent that kind of true black. While you never have to worry about burn-in at all with QLED, you might have to worry about the picture settings. Uh, some QLED TVs look great out of the box, but a ton really benefit from picture tweaking. So I've spent a lot of time with TVs and I've tried to make even subpar QLED TV picture look amazing by just going in there and spending the time in the settings. It is not required, but I think it's worth your time to find the best settings for your TV. And if you don't know how to do it, Whatever set you buy, go to YouTube, go to Google, and sort of put in the TV model and how to tweak the settings. You'll find really good step-by-step -step guides. Also with QLEDs, viewing angles are not as great as OLED. Black levels become faded and you kind of tend to move to extreme angles, so off to either side. Also issues of blooming, you might hear that term when shopping for TVs, but kind of there's a halo of sorts around very bright objects. Uh, in more expensive QLED TVs, this is less of an issue, but in cheaper models, it still exists. Keep in mind that a ton of these disadvantages I talked about when it comes to QLEDs are not really noticeable to most people at all. Actually, the gap in quality between a QLED TV and OLED TV has gotten so much smaller. It's hard to tell a difference unless you have them sitting right next to each other for comparison. And we're talking about picture quality. I would say that OLED was going to win hands down. Uh, no other TV technology is going to produce the black levels that OLED can. And if you've never stood in front of an OLED, like, trust me, this video is not going to do it justice. You really have to see one in person, I think, to appreciate how amazing of an image they produce, especially the newer and very bright W OLED and the bright and colorful QD OLED variations. However, in all other aspects, I would say QLED is going to appeal to more people. Not only is it more affordable, you don't have to worry about burn-in, and with QLED, you still get really bright, vibrant colors, awesome contrast, and bright level that comes from those bright whites make an image really pop. Keep in mind that QLED is still a relatively newer technology comparison to OLED, sort of in the leaps it's made from where it started to, to where it is today, I think is really incredible. And with each iteration, it gets closer and closer to that OLED quality. And as time goes on, I think it's gonna be even harder and harder to tell the difference between the two. All right, so hopefully this little guide, difference between sort of QLED and OLED technology, I hope it's been helpful. I love researching these and talking about the technologies because they are both really good. Whichever set you choose to buy will be right for you, but now at least you'll know the technologies that I'm gonna go into each.